All right. Uh, hello and welcome. Um, this is a special eclipse edition of um, uh, the state of digital. So um, just checking the technology, making sure we got everything all going and then um, uh, we'll get started. So uh, today is is uh, part of my weekly program. This one is called the state of digital and I'm calling it the eclipse edition. Um, for reasons yet to be determined. <laughs> anyway, there's apparently a big eclipse coming in the sky. So it was the only time available. So I, was, I wasn't I was exactly going to change my program for an eclipse. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to show you through that or some of that as we get into this. So um, <clears throat> this is, as I mentioned, my Digital Leadership Facebook Live series. Um, my name is Doyle Bueller, and my goal is to help you better understand and pursue what matters most in your digital business. How to make a difference with your digital strategy through enhancing enhancing and embracing what I call your digital leadership. I help enterprise and entrepreneurs scale, grow and disrupt their business and sales through digital leadership. And I'm the author of the book on digital strategy, The Digital Delusion. Uh, and I've got some cool stuff coming up pretty quick about this book, which i uh, looking forward to it. Uh, so the overall purpose of these is to answer one important question uh, that most businesses and enterprises have is what real world digital strategies actually work for my business. Um, of course, there's not one size fits all, but the goal here is to help you decide which strategies work, can work best for your business. Uh, so in today's show, what I'm talking about in the state of digital uh, with an eclipse on my mind, right? Uh, taking a look at a couple of issues, uh, the business of eclipse, right? What is What are some businesses doing as a result of this? I thought I would have some kind of segue and what better segue than actually having an astronomical event. Uh, I'm going to talk about Facebook chopping clickbait. I'm going to talk about is your site secure enough for your customers? and for Google. And then finally, I'm going to uh, finish with a uh, risk versus transformation and what a lot of CEOs are seeing in terms of managing that. How much risk do we take on for the amount of transformation? So um, that's where I want to start. So I actually have a, um, where is it? I've got a live feed coming from NASA, if it's still there. Um, it is. So I'm going to show that. Um, so you can actually watch the eclipse while you're listening to me. Like, how good is that? <laughs> um, but I'll be flipping back and forth uh, amongst the screens anyway. So it looks like right now I'm, I'm feeding in from NASA and we've got, they've got 370,000 people watching this live feed of the eclipse. So fantastic stuff. Um, and you can check in on that anytime throughout that. <laughs> so we'll check back and forth. Uh, as we get into this. So, um, and I actually do have, if you might have noticed, my hashtag, which is normally not lit. I thought I would show you what an eclipse can look like. So, I've got the earth, right? And I've got the moon, <laughs> the happy moon. <laughs> and so, these are swinging around, swinging around, swinging around. And then suddenly, the moon goes in front of the earth, like something like that. Yeah. Cool. And we got a fantastic solar eclipse uh, happening across the U.S. I don't actually have full access. I can't see it directly. We're only in partial uh, eclipse country uh, up further up north. But anyway, that's where that's at. So what does, you know, what does eclipse tell you about your business? Well, unfortunately, absolutely nothing. But what it can do, what I wanted to take a quick look at is, is sort of the the um, the things that are surrounding the eclipse and how actually a lot of communities and, and towns and all that and businesses for that matter have kind of looked at, well, how can we actually embrace the eclipse and how can we actually make it work um, throughout and, and what can we kind of do to be able to to prepare our businesses for that. And so I thought of that as, as sort of a, a specific business problem or a business um, opportunity as well, but not so much as sort of the the people, you know, selling the the trinkets and trash from the side of the road type thing, because that to me is not a business. There are businesses that do that. And, you know, I'm not saying that they can't do anything better. Um, but what I'm saying is that they haven't actually aligned themselves with the full impact of the opportunity. Right. And that's what you find in a lot of businesses that we kind of get caught up in doing our doing our doing. And yet we forget these these massive events, these massive things that can actually help and, and build upon our business. And some of the towns and cities that are that are actually in the path of totality of the eclipse 
started thinking about this like five years ago saying well how do we actually create interest how do we think long term we've got an eclipse coming in about five years from now um you know what do we need to put in place now to kind of help with our long-term strategy and, and again this is what where i'm going with this is that a lot of businesses don't actually think about that suddenly they think oh hey there's an eclipse you know next week or tomorrow let's go put some some trinkets and trash together to, to try to get people to buy and, and while again sometimes that works you know what do you do after the eclipse right Whereas the towns and, and villages that are really planning and preparing for this, they're able to sustain that value, that, that eclipse value uh, over the long term um, instead of this, um, you know, sort of on the moment marketing. And you see some of these and some of them have quite been quite interesting. Nike has launched some, some shoes. I don't have an image of that, but Volvo has also launched these uh, eclipse cars. So it has actually a, a, um, uh, welder's lens on the top instead of the normal yeah. sunroof uh, and then one of the funnier ones was Chiquita banana where the banana kind of emerges from the actually I should have had that as a prop um, the banana, banana emerges from the the um, uh, the eclipse which is which is actually quite fun but but this is more on the moment marketing so they have it's it's short term it's it's great it's a gag but after it's over like they have nothing to sort of hold it together type thing and that's again where a strategy is super super critical um, in aligning that longer term vision is okay let's build up to this event but we also need to continue that right are we planning something remarkable with your strategy or are you just going to kind of hop on the bandwagon at the end and again from a business perspective you know 90 percent of businesses just kind of hop on the band bandwagon go oh yeah there's this big thing coming I you know let's do something for it right it's everybody's gonna be talking about it let's hope they talk about us too um, which doesn't make sense for the long term uh, so you have to sort of weigh short-term gain versus planning and preparation and developing a strategy as well so look at you know are you planning for special events and they don't have to be celestial environmental events events they can just be sort of um, events that are pulling together events that are coming up in a short term and a long term but events that are looking at um, how can you actually connect with them and and don't just think of again the sort of the finite event itself but sort of the long-term event that um, that you can build upon and there's a phone going crazy I don't know if you can hear that um, not close enough to answer it so I'll just leave it for that but anyway take a look at, at planning for that and looking long term and seeing okay what can we do afterwards what can we do uh, coming up uh, in the future as well so um, capitalize on that right and and the thing to understand is that you know the understated reason for the business of the eclipse right is is people need a reason so your reason doesn't need to be this universal celestial event like an eclipse, but you still need a reason. And so these towns and everything else that's, that has been preparing, that have been preparing, they have a reason, right? But, you know, you can find a reason, and this goes into sort of why, the reason why, and your purpose, and, and that sort of thing, that which connects with a lot of stuff that, that I'm working on. But you need a reason, and that's what's drawing people to that event. But you know what? Take a take a look at the scale and how you can actually look at um, building a reason into everything that you do in the digital space. So um, that's about it for the the eclipse. Let's keep going on to uh, the next topic: uh, Facebook chopping clickbait. And this one is is a really sort of personal annoyance of mine because you have video like there's been clickbait right where it's outlandish headlines and celebrity this and celebrity that and and all that kind of stuff but what they're actually doing is looking more at video clickbait this time so facebook released a, a press release last week to saying they're going to be chopping down chopping down uh, they're taking action against video clickbook clickbait rather and um one of the most annoying things is you'll see the video right and it's just a video or it looks like a picture nothing changes right they're going to be chopping that um the ones that go to sort of uh you know it's not necessarily a real video or it actually just shows an image of a video uh they're going to be taking taking a look at that so look the the, the overall thing is that clickbait uh sorry facebook is cleaning up their environment and they're trying to you know deliver a great customer experience and if you're producing this stuff like the the videos that show the same image throughout you're, you're kind of 
you know what? It's like you're playing with the the um, playing with the rules, right? But at the same time, like you know that that's not going to work for the long term. So the companies that are producing these single image videos, like start producing some real content because really that's what people are looking for. Um, you know, they don't want something so simple that or or misleading even. It's like if you see a video, you expect it to be a video, not a single slide slideshow type thing. So you really have to look at how are you producing your content? How are you producing your video content? And what's really important for that? So if you're not doing that, you know, time is of the essence now because this is going to be a long-term strategy that you're going to have to get into um, to be able to develop uh, your video content. So start now. Facebook, like I said, is cleaning up their um, their user experience. So they're going to get rid of all this crap that's coming out and, and that people are trying to work out, to, you know, try to hack it hack it this way or that way or whatever the case may be so um, it's not going to work in the end so just you know develop a good content plan develop a good content strategy create some remarkable videos create some remarkable content and you won't have an issue uh, whatsoever at all so uh, keep that in mind when you start producing content uh, video content rather uh, so moving on to uh, Google actually uh, sent on a message uh, it's been going for a while but uh, if you know uh, Google again is also looking at, you know, how best they can deliver a customer experience. And in this case, they've said the SSL, the secure socket layer um, method of uh, obtaining information needs to be a priority for businesses. So it's no longer safe to just have HTTP um, colon slash slash and then your web address, right? You have to have that HTTPS right, which is what's also called the SSL. And what that really does is connect the user with the generated content directly um, so that there's, you know, less possibility. Is it 100% secure? No, but there's less possibility that information that you collect can be used elsewhere without the, the two piece, the two parties connecting directly. So it's really important that you take a look at, does my site have SSL? And again, 95% of sites do not have it. And if you do, it would it would basically read HTTPS with then the, the, the a few extra symbols and your full web address as well. So if you don't have it, um, you need to investigate ways of getting getting to it. If you ever need a hand with that, just let me know. Happy to help out. But the point is, is that Google is now looking at that as a measure of will they send actual people to your site uh, through um a Google search, because if you have something even as simple as a, an email form, you're still collecting customer data. And as we get into this state of, you know, privacy and making sure that, you know, there's no way of people hacking your information, you have to take a look at something even as simple as a simple email download, you're still collecting your customer information. So you need to be able to have an SSL. Google has sent several warnings to, you know, web owners and webmasters and that sort of thing. Uh, so you might have received one in your in your Google for Business panel, um, but if not, you need to sort of look at how can you actually implement SSL within your own digital ecosystem. So um, it, it can be used again for something as simple as an email form. If you're using e-commerce, your web designer should have suggested that you definitely definitely have an SSL but for some of the more content orientated sites now you will need to have an SSL going forward because again Google's looking for the experience that they can deliver um, to to their users so it, it they don't say it officially but the likelihood of them using it as a, a ranking signal is pretty good so last year and the year before that Google was hammering away hey you need to get a mobile optimized mobile responsive site which was fantastic, um, and that upped the game, right? So before you could kind of get away with a mobile site where you could kind of click and zoom and, and that sort of thing, they said no, no more of that. They want to build a great customer experience. So now they're coming back with, okay, mobile's still adopt adaptation is still um, kind of low, but it gives you an opportunity to outrank your fellow uh, competitors as well. And now with SSL. So two quick little changes that you can actually implement pretty quickly uh, with a site, uh, you'd be able to do that also. So if you don't do it, what you're going to do is your visitors to your site can potentially get an unsecure site warning from Google. And those are sort of the the... Um, the web owner's biggest fear because then it's like, well, is this site actually safe and and can I trust you and, and that sort of thing. So 
something to look at. So they will start issuing those warnings, I think, later in 2017, um, and then probably using those for ranking signals coming up as well. So excellent. How are we doing with the uh, with the eclipse? Let's just take a watch there. I want to see this too. Oh, what is that? Oh, anyway, doesn't look like an eclipse there. Just uh, see if I can connect that feedback up. All right, we'll come back and check in on that. Uh, coming up later. So, um, and the last point today that I wanted to talk about was risk versus transformation. And we all know a lot about risk and sometimes we don't necessarily analyze it properly. Um, and transformation too is like, what the heck is transformation? Um, risk is, you know, that ability to understand what could potentially go wrong. And obviously the upside is what could potentially go right as well. So there is risk both ways. Uh, transformation is moving your your entire digital ecosystem towards more embracing, more engaging uh, with your audience and adding in special features and activities that, that transform the way that you've done business previously but also transforms that audience experience, that that uh, customer experience as well. Um, and an interesting study was uh, from MIT Sloan Management Review. They interviewed about 3,500 executives from around the world. Um, and the biggest thing for transformation is, is risk, right? Risk is the biggest fear of transformation. And, and so what the, this is actually quite interesting is because you would think that with all the techno, technologically savvy businesses and CEOs and, and businesses that are saying, oh, let's disrupt and let's transform and let's do this and that um, to, make, to make our business, you know, much more embracing technology, they're still scared of it, right? It's still like they're still fearful that, well, maybe what if we make the wrong move and what if we don't do the right things or put them in the right way? Are we going to lose our audience? Are we going to lose our customers? Um, and that sort of thing. And, and risk is, is, is a huge factor and don't get me wrong. Um, but you need to be a little bit, not super conservative. You need to be able to understand the factors that this is actually part of a, a, a talk that I give on disruption, but there are a number of factors that help reduce the risk of transformation so that you have basically all, all your um, pieces lined up before you actually engage transformation. And that's one of the ways that you can reduce the risk towards transformation and say, what do I really need? How do I really need to be able to plan ahead? And again, this comes down to strategy. And, and as I talk about a lot, an awful lot, it is about strategy. It's how can you sort of build a longer term uh, following? How can you build a longer term business as well? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Had the feed come in from NASA. Oh, still nothing. I might have to go put it on mute. Um, but anyway, that, that's the important thing is that while you need to be safe and secure in your business and, and um, you know, the concert, be a little bit conservative of how you generate business. Uh, it's still really important that to look at how, how what factors are coming in to disrupt my business. How can I transform to counter uh, those dis disruptions, or how can I actually create disruption myself? And that's the, sort of the main thing. And and a lot of companies are saying, well, our customers are pushing us beyond our comfort zone, and that's uh, actually exactly what you want. Um, to be able to do is say, hey, our customers are providing us with some some insights to say, okay, this might not work, or we're looking for this a little bit differently than you might think, or that sort of thing. So you need to take a look at, take more of an experimental mindset, I guess, is the best way of looking at it, um, and take a more of a risk-taking attitude, attitude as well um, to help you drive transformation, because at the end of the day, if you don't identify uh, these factors that you need to transform your business, you're, you're going to be left in the dust, like uh, whether it's technology or even just customer experience, you need to be able to understand how is your industry transforming and can you ride that wave? Can you create that disruption? Can you, can you, you know, uh, maintain that transformation as well? Because that's an important part to any uh, business also. So, all right. So that's, all I've got for today. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to add them in the comments uh, now or later if you actually just are taking a look at this. Uh, so hopefully that's been helpful. 
Um, in future episodes, there's again, three core categories that I go through as part of the digital leadership, Facebook live events. Uh, the first one is what you're watching today, the state of digital, where I talk about specific ideas and insights, uh, happening right now and how they affect your business and what you can do about it. Uh, Second, I have digital leadership with a special guest where I interview an expert in the field uh, and discuss their specific digital strategies. And then the last one is a, I have a regular weekly digital discovery uh, where I review tools, answer questions, or talk about specific challenges uh, that may be holding you back in the business uh, at now or in the future or from time to time. So cool. Without any further ado, thanks. Go enjoy the solar eclipse if you still can. And uh, if not, watch it on Facebook Live or whatever the case may be. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you online.